Probably the more useful well, we'll ask you some now, we'll ask you just for the six o'clock. Um, you're probably going to be told now that you need to back the idea that you've had intent to uh, reinforce those troops already here. What will you say to that? I'm going to wait for the question first. Um, I know obviously the General Rose wants more troops, and that's why we've come out to see, uh, to get a full briefing as to why they might be needed. As, as far as you see things at the moment, do you think you'll agree with them? I'm not prepared to comment on that. What do you think is at stake here, as far as you're concerned? Well, obviously, the question is, will the ceasefire hold? And it must be in everybody's interest to make sure that it does. And that as against that, as the British government has always said, we mustn't get ourselves dragged into a peacemaking position where we could not extricate ourselves if the fighting started again and became unsustainable. General Rose's argument that more troops should be sent now in order to withdraw them sooner rather than later. Is that an argument that one can refute? <laughs> I haven't heard the general's argument yet, so I'll, I'll save my comments to my hour. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Hello. Okay. The opposition members are key to support General Rawls. Mm. Can I just put another question to the next question? <laughs> Mr. Nicholas, can you go back to Dublin? Well, if everybody else is going to send them, I think we should, but I think we're very skeptical about getting dragged in to a situation which, after all, started the First World War and was along the road, started the second. But the argument that uh, Sir Michael Rhodes will uh, put forward is that there is already some success in the ceasefire, it's holding, we have to build on that success, and that involves sending out extra British troops. Yes, well, I can understand that argument, but it doesn't come to a conclusion. It's what happens when you take them away. 